Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, shit fuck, cunt, jizz, blacks. How you doing, folks? It's Tuesdays Ooh. with Stories. We're back. Oh, Mark's yeah. Got a hat on. I got my hair looks okay, quite frankly. I. I, I it's Uh-oh. coming back. It's fluffed up. It's nice. It's got a hell of a shine on it, too. Or maybe that's the forehead. But coming back? What do you mean coming back? I just got a cut. That's what I'm saying. You got a cut, then it has to come back to normal. It takes a day or two. Well, oh, there you go. I got a cut. And uh, by the way, check out the show on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube. We're blowing each other over here. And if you want it the week it comes out, get on the Patreon, you, you, you silly fucks. I know. Every week, somebody, Why, what's this? This is the old one. What, what are they talking about OJ and Reaganomics? You got to get the new one. Get the new one. Uh, so I got a haircut. Boy, haircuts are really never ending. I, have you ever had a guy? Do you have a guy, a good guy? I got a place. It's a different guy. One day it's an Islam. The next day it's a Russian. Then I got a Croatian. I'm all over the UN. Well, it's it's all Russian Jews over here. And we've probably mentioned it before. I switched it to mention instead of talked about. Ah. We've, we've probably mentioned it before, but it's so fascinating when you have one ethnicity that's all doing one thing. Like, yes. In Astoria, every barber is a Russian Jew. I don't know what happened with the Jews in Russia that they were like, let's go cut cut the hair in uh in queens but that's what they're doing i'll tell you what it is it's the the koreans do the nails the Ch- japanese are doing the the uh, laundry uh the turkish bathhouse russian bath. i mean they they go some ballsy guy leaves the homeland and goes hey i got us a gig get down here and they all get on the boat choo choo they come down to ellis island and they jump in the same gig it's a family affair now i'm driving the bus <laughs> But, also, I don't know why I did a choo-choo for a boat, but you got it. It's the same thing. The 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 choo-choo and the hoo-hoo, the boat is kind of like a... That's there similar. you go. Similar. I should have yeah. done that. I don't even know. Do you pull a string or is it a, a lever or a button? Who knows? I think you could pull a string. I, I think it's... Yeah, I think it's a... I don't know which boat is which because like my uncle's boat, it's just a button. It's like a... And it goes... So, oh, that's right. It dep- but I assume the big fucking bring all the Jews over is a it's a big horn. It's a it's a string. Speaking of big horns, that's what they have on their face. <laughs> they got the horns. By the way, your uncle has a boat. That's pretty good. Oh yeah, a big boater. I mean, I've been what? I've been boating since the eighties. Yeah. Wow. Well, right off the boat. See, I would love a boat. I mean, obviously, I, I don't have the means and the finances and the capital, but I would love a boat. But every all you hear is they, de- they depreciate in value the second you take it off the pier, and I'm like, well, I couldn't enjoy it because every day would go by and go, it's worth less. Up, oh, it's worth less. Well, it's worth what you get out of it, I guess. But there's the old adage: it's nice to know some of the boat, sucks to have a boat, and then you know what boat stands for? Bust out another thousand. Ooh, I love the, what are you, the anagram, anachronism, anal yeah, fissure? I think it's synonym, if I'm not mistaken, which I probably no, am. No, no, that ain't it. Synonym is like woman and cunt. Yes, yes, it's uh, <laughs> the, the, the same, two of the same, uh, right. woman and worthless or useless, but an antonym is opposite, but, but Bo, Seinfeld's got the great one. He's like, that's what golf is, go out, leave family. Ah, that's great. That, well, that's his joke, but I'm saying there's got to be a, a term for that 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 move. Which move? Anagram, I've lost. An- anachronism, anaphylactic, and Wait, Nicole which, Smith. Where are we at again? I forget what we were talking. I'm about. all over the road. Go, go out, leave family, golf, bow, bust out another thousand. All right. boat. That's got a. That's is it acronym? That's acronym. Yeah. All right. NASA, National Air and Space Asshole. Yes. Abbreviation. Yes. Um, Abreva. But what were we talking about? Oh, sorry. I had something. Oh, the haircut, maybe? That's what started this a while ago. The the, the family sends the the Asian down. He starts pressing your pants. 
Right. So here's what I don't, I don't have a guy right now. So right before the the quarantine mix up here, I went to a place. I had a meeting in Midtown, and I went. I was like, let me get a haircut at this place, and it was a fancy pantsy. Ring the doorbell. It's like men in bow ties and a couple of fat ladies with manicures. Sure. And I got my haircut. It was nice. It felt like a nice place. You know, it had the feeling of not a barber, but like a, I don't know what you call them. One of the cool places that you have in the village there where people the, are dressed up in this wood and bullshit. Yeah, it's like a salon more. It's a trendy salon. It's an experience. You get a shampoo, a handy, and uh, there's you know Enya playing. Right, exactly. Rashan Salon. And so I got... My haircut there, and it was like forty-eight bucks or something crazy, and I'm not getting any kind of the the fucking thing where they shave your head and swoop right. it over and whatever. I guess nah. got the bullshit. So I was like, "This is crazy expensive." I go home and I open the door, and a puddle just fires out of my wife's pussy, and she's like, "That's the best haircut I've ever seen." She ripped my bra and panties off and, and just you know stuck her fist in my ass because she's like, "Whatever you did, you got to go to that place every time now." Is that this one? No, this is oh. no, not this fucking shit. <laughs> I was going to say, what's going on in the world here? This no, looks this like a, a soggy piece of bread. This, this, is, an, this is an Enzo. <laughs> but so <laughs> I went. So I kept going to that place, but now it's quarantine and, you know, I got jizz in my eyes. So I just go to the place down the street, which is my original place, yeah. back to the Russian Jews. Yes. And boy, these guys are not fond of uh, anybody. I'll just say that. I don't want to, you know make people upset but these guys got this slurs like <laughs> you wouldn't believe i mean it's like it's like a red fox record this this place but anyway really oh yeah it's these people are this those people are that can you believe these fucking people i mean you're really like jesus christ and you know how it is you gotta nod along because you get right. your haircut i'm like oh hey, yeah i hate them the guy's got a pair of uh, shears at your neck what are you gonna disagree with the guy's got a razor up to your ear here so yeah. i'm with you you can't be like, that's actually not true about those folks. So, you know, it's like a clan meeting over there. But but it's fascinating to hear what they think, too. Like, I don't want to shut them up because I want to know what they're actually, the, the truth that they're, they're oh, yeah. thinking. Their, their truth. Yes, exactly. Um, so, anyway, what do you got there? A dildo? <laughs> what is that? That's a brush. Ah. Uh, lady, <laughs> lady stuff. All right. So, anyways, I go to get my hair cut. And there's three guys, and there's the old guy, uh, Benny, sweet guy. Benny Hanna. He cuts my hair, and I go, yeah, just trim it up. I, I always say not too much because you're always afraid you're going to leave with a mohawk, a johawk. Yeah. And he's cutting, and l look how long it is on the top. I mean, isn't yeah. this long? Am I crazy? That's a little long on the top. I was thinking that. It doesn't look bad, but it, as a guy who's gotten a zillion haircuts, I can sense that he, he left too much on the roof. Well, and here's the thing. I, I'm not wearing my glasses because i got to give them space to cut because, you know, I don't want them to have to boobly-boo. So he cuts my hair, and he goes, how's that? Voila. And I just go, uh, great. But I haven't put my glasses on yet. So I'm going by ah. feel. I'm just looking at the hair on my chest. Right. And then I put the glasses on, and I'm like, fuck, but I've already said <laughs> great, and he already yes. you know, washed his hands. So I just leave going, I need a fucking haircut. I'm the same way. Every time they get the mirror in the back and they go, what do you think of the back? And I go, ah. And then I leave and I go, I got a fucking Theo Vaughn mullet. I look like Ray <laughs> Cyrus over here. So, But I, I can't go back in, so I get the lady to snip it up with a couple of butter knives. Let me ask you this. Is it like, is his brother Steve Ray Cyrus or is his name Billy Ray? Is uh, Ray Cyrus the last name? Is it like Brooke Roberts? Brooke Roberts. Well, it's Julia Ashley Roberts? Brooke Roberts. Her last oh. name, her first name is Ashley Brooke, and her last name is Roberts. I think he's, it's, a, he's a hick. He's a hillbilly country guy, so I think it's Billy Ray. So it's Billy Ray, and then like his brother is Ken Cyrus. Yes, which also proves my point that hillbillies and ghetto black guys are the same. Hillbillies, ghetto black guy. Oh, interesting. They 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 don't seem to like each other, but they're actually the exact same group. Like. They got guns. They play their music out of their truck. Uh, they're tough guys. They hate gays. They they're very stuck in their culture. You know, a uh, certain outfit, hats, very similar. Interesting. Yeah, I think we're all very similar. P people of a certain uh, area and income are, are all extremely similar, and then they they all turn us on each other. They that's how they that's how they do us, as they say. I agree. I agree. And you, it, to hate someone, it has to trigger. There's got to be a thing going on in your life that makes you hate. You know, they always say, of course, these two fight. They're very alike. 
You know, they always say that, and it's the same with groups. Right. Groups, similar groups are, uh, yeah, different strokes for different folks, or whatever you say. Yeah. Uh, I, I, don't, I do not want to get into what happened last week. We're not going to get into it, but I'll All just right. say this. I mean, on the bonus, we, we did talk about it a little bit, and sure. it was pretty well predicted uh, the night yeah. before on the bonus. But true, anyways, true I, will, I will say this, and I don't want to get too much into it because I don't want to deal with everyone saying, hey, eat your own jizz, you piece of shit, you cuck, liberal faggot, fuck you, whatever. Yeah. But I was watching the, the news, and they were like, it was one guy was like, or as a podcast, this guy was like, you know, this whole thing was, you know, white nationalism going after marginalized groups. They hate marginalized groups. And I just wanted to say, I'm like, Fuck all those people that went into the Capitol. I hope they all get go to federal prison, which I think they will. But I'm like, I think they will. Those yeah. are those are those are probably marginalized groups. Yeah, I think those... I don't know what marginalized means, but I'm like, I don't think those people are doing well. No, they're poor. They're poor and they're uneducated. They're idiots and uh, probably unemployed. You know, yeah. I don't think these are upstanding citizens. Yeah, I think they're in the margin. Those aren't like stockbrokers that are in. There. No, no. They had you saw the pictures of their teeth. They they were toothless. Well, that's a little... I mean, I feel like I'm a good person. Uh, well, you have teeth. I mean, it's a small mouth, so I haven't Thank seen you. any yet. But uh, <laughs> these guys have very little teeth. A couple stick out. But, yeah, I just want... I don't know. I don't want to get into a, a foxy area. I don't want to sound like I'm defending these people either. No. I'm just saying, uh, you know, I think they're on the margins. But then maybe I don't know what marginalized means. I might be using the word wrong. I'm just saying these people are not fucking... Out, uh, the taking their, they're not visiting their second house. These folks, they yes, fucking took the yes. bus down there and to beat a cop with a flag. Right, and, right, uh, right. God hates way, flags. The the cops, by the way, everybody hates the cops. This group hates the cops. That group hates the cops. The polar opposite groups both hate the cops. You can't win. I mean, it's defund the police from the left, and then when a cop gets killed by a a, a, a proud boy, they go, "You killed a police officer! How dare you!" It's like I thought you hated the cops. Like you, everybody just picks which way it's going to help them. You know, like if it's this way one day and it's helping my side, this way is perfect. But if it's that way the same day and it does help my side, that way is no good. And by the way, I would have killed for a cop on a tank. We kept seeing that all summer, and everyone was like, <laughs> "Why do the cops have tanks? Why do they have armor?" Well, it's, yeah. it's just in case a bunch of fucking redneck pieces of shit assholes take over the Capitol. You can run them over with a tank. But we're going too far. We're getting too into it. All right. It. All right. My point is it takes one to hate one. You know, I feel like Antifa and Proud Boys, they're both psychos, and I think they're kind of similar. I can see that. Yeah. You know, it's I'm a, a dear friend of mine said a, a, a thing that was very insightful. He said the two sides are no longer left and right. The two sides are radical and not radical. Ooh. And I think that's a great point. You have like. two sides that are fucking outside of their fucking mind, losing their shit, going, this, everything's this, and this side's going, everything's that, and they're both batshit. And then there's a bunch of people, the majority of people going, boy, these people are fucking crazy. Yeah. All right. I, I like that. That's good. Radical and not radical. It's a yeah. shame that radical got turned into, like, skateboarding and sunglasses. Radical! Because it sounds good. Well, there's the Rad Dude cast, which is a, which is a podcast I, I highly recommend. Greg Stone, Anthony DeVito, Brendan Ayer, three of the funniest guys of all time. And, uh, go all check hilarious. Out that show. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Rad is, it's it's either a, a Muslim bomber with a bomb strapped to his chest running through an airport. He's a radical. Or it's a guy uh, hanging 10 in Malibu with a, yeah. su a sunny D. My favorite T-shirt when I was a kid, you know how you have, a, like, as adults, too, you have a T-shirt that you just wear all day, every day, yeah. and eventually you hit puberty and you start rubbing cum on it. But mine was, it was a rat on a skateboard, and it said radical. Ooh. It was like a white T-shirt, and he had a green skateboard, and he was, like, doing this thing. <laughs> it was during, you know, early 90s when everything was, you know, skateboarding was, like, the thing. So it was yeah. radical, and that was my shirt. Right. Everything was radical or extreme. Extreme Doritos. Extreme games. Extreme sports. We got it. And the same thing happened. The extremists. There you go. They're so 90s. All right. Boy, this is fun. All right. We're, we're taking over the world here and, and trying to stay neutral, for Christ's sakes. Well, I mean, I'm not. I'm, I want to say I'm well, neutral. I'm not neutral. I'm comedically. But Oh, I see, I see. Because people, you say you're neutral, people will fucking <laughs> firebomb your house. I know. By the way, did you see that video of, uh, it's going around the uh, the hood hood clips. It's uh, it's Jimmy Fallon talking to RuPaul, 
And Jimmy Fallon goes, God, RuPaul. First of all, the title of the video is when Jimmy Fallon thought he was about to get canceled. And RuPaul is talking to Jimmy Fallon. He goes, so here's your album. You're the first drag queen ever. And he goes, drag queen? Drag queen? And Jimmy Fallon goes... And he goes, I am the drag king. And he goes, oh, you can see Fallon, like, breathe an air of, of, of relief. It's it's a great moment in history. Like, you see, everybody's fucking nervous. That's hilarious. No, that's how I feel right now. I'm already in my mind. I'm like, I haven't heard the last four things you said because I said one thing about the other thing. <laughs> exactly. And then I'm like, oh, we're fucked. That's but, why I get annoyed uh, when they go, there's no canceling. Now, shut up. There isn't canceling. I'm like, everybody's terrified. We're all shivering in our tootsies over here because we, we don't want to say retard on the wrong app. No, I mean... <laughs> It's nerve-wracking, and uh, it's crazy, kooky week, and, um, <laughs> you know, who, who could have saw that coming? Uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, what can you do? It's Great uh, for comedy, I guess. There's a lot of sh- crazy shit going on. Oh, yeah, I had a hot tweet. It was fun. I really took advantage of that civil war that happened, but, uh, you know, what can you do? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Well, I, I got a lot to, to stick in your ass, see if you squirt. And, uh, yeah, I haven't seen you in a, in a Coons age. It's great, it's great to see you. It's, it's great to see you. And, and yeah, I want to hear all about it because I'm a little fucked up. I mean, I, the, the, the news I took hard, and then I got some family shit going on. So I was up there all weekend, and it, it's drama to the left and, and, and fiasco to the right and, you know, my dad yeah. behind me. And so... <laughs> I, I need some. I'm like a fan of the show. I need you to really, you know, throw some things in my face or whatever. You got it, Fanny. Well, put on a put on your face shield and a mask because I'm about to spit some COVID right in your mouth here. The uh, face shield first, sucks. Get out of here with the face shield. It's a bit much, and I can get my <laughs> dick right under it, can't I? I mean, you got the whole world coming out the bottom. I don't get the face shield. I, the, I like the mask. I'm pro mask. Put on a sure. mask. You know, I like the movie, the mask, yeah. whatever the fuck, catcher's mask. But the, the, shield, the shield is a bad show and it's a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> People love that show. So watch out. That's going to be the big, uh, big snafu of the episode. That's what happens. I, we have this whole thing and, and no one gives a shit. And then I'm like, I don't know the Sopranos. I don't care for the acting. And people are like. <laughs> What? <laughs> you fucking piece of shit. Ah, well, I'm still mad at Ronan for a lot. Not like it's uh, John Candy. I, I, I'm, he's the whole, the whole guy is moot. Everything he says, I'm out. I'm like, you hate John Candy? What are you talking about? I mean, uh, I, I want to get to your story here, but Ronan, I feel for him. I mean, he is taking a beating in the YouTube uh, comments. Good. It's brutal. I, I mean, the, the poor guy, it's really harsh, and I feel for him because I'm like, I, I love doing the show. We're doing this podcast. It's on YouTube. We put the audio on the uh, Patreon here. But it's a blast, and I love talking to him. But, God, this poor guy, I mean, they're really letting him have it because he doesn't like Home Alone, and he hates John Candy, and he doesn't like John Hughes. And All right. You see, he's got some – see, that's what worries me about reviews and critiques and all this shit is I'll – Half of it comes from internal. Your dad anally raped your mom in front of you on Christmas morning, and now you hate Home Alone because it has to do with Christmas. It ain't fair. You can't critique things with your own uh, internal bullshit uh, dilemma going on, and then you spew it out onto the page, and you attack, uh, you know, Cuckoo's Nest or whatever the hell it is. It's, It's not fair to the movie. But that's the thing, though. Then people take it personally. You're like, hey, I'm just saying that because my dad was raped. You don't have to get mad at me. Like, people, I'm like, I don't like the Sopranos. Let go, folks. You enjoy the Sopranos. I don't like it. You don't like, you like it. Just move on. It's okay. To say it's bad. Like, if you don't like uh, German food and you go, yeah, I went to the German restaurant. It sucks. The food is bad. But you don't like German food. So uh, how can I trust the review? That's fair. I mean, that's why I say I think it's bad. You think it's great. Whatever. But here's one thing I do get annoyed with, and I had a fun talk with a friend of ours uh-huh. where I said, uh, you know, he's like, sometimes he was, we were talking about Ronan's nonsense, and he said, well, I think sometimes people just want to be contrarian. They want to be different. Mm. And I said, well, I, I, take the, I take exception to that because people say that to me about The Sopranos, and I'm like, I'm not trying to be. I would love to like The Sopranos. Right, I right. don't care for it. I'm not trying to be special. I don't right. like it. And yes. then he said, th- then this guy responded, oh, I fucking hate The Sopranos. And uh-huh. I'm like, aha! Uh-huh. So there you go. You're not trying to be contrarian. You hate it. He's like, oh, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. First of all, I kissed him on the lips and blew him. Yeah. And uh, but wow. Anyways, Who'd, where'd you find this guy under uh, under a bridge? He could. He's he's under everything. He's very small. 
Ah, I'll say. And he used uh, to sell coke, and he loves hockey. I read you loud and uh, loud and queer. <laughs> All right, but uh, anyways, get let's I, get to these stories. I talked to that little nugget today, actually. Oh, he's but a fun nugget, fun little to, guy. It's a great guy, good egg. All right, so we'll start off a little lighter. I got a, I got about two or three things I want to put in your mouth and see if you uh, salivate. But so I do a uh, a show in Montauk, Long Island, months ago. I don't know if you remember that. I drove out there with Fat Doug Key. We did a show on a porch. It was pretty light. It's a four-hour drive, but it's beautiful. We made a night out of it. We got clams. It was fun. Either way, I, I, I made friends with the guy who invented the magazine. It's one of these hip magazines that sells for $45. The paper's worth more than my apartment. You know, it's, it, it's very chic and cool clothes and smells like uh, soap and lavender. You know these magazines that are they're like taller than the regular mags? Yeah, it's very thick. It says like binding. Yes, yes, binding. And, uh, you know, it's it's... Whatever, it's always got like a, here's our, our Korea episode where we talk about Korea. We sent the guy out there, he had Korean food and fucked the, the, the Sim King or Kim and Im Jong Un or whatever. But either way, so they know I like comedy. So they said, hey, we're doing our interview episode. We'd like you to interview a, a hero of yours. And I said, okay, great, I'll interview Colin Quinn. They said, great, we love Colin Quinn. So I interviewed Colin Quinn. It went great. They, they put it in print. They sent me the hard copy. You know, I got on my wall now. I'm in the whalebone. It's a very exciting. And as a gift, they sent a huge box. Now, I don't know what this is. I open it up. It's a cooler. Oh, I thought it was going to be my mother. <laughs> huge box, folks. Yes. <laughs> So they sent me, well, they're both ice cold inside, but I prop it open. You know, it's got the dry ice with the packs of ice. It goes, psss, and I go, holy hell. I look in it. It's four, four pints of ice cream. And I go, oh, my God, I can't believe it. This is unbelievable. So I'm looking at Rocky Road and soy, van- or uh, what is it, vanilla bean, all this great stuff. And I, I squeeze it, and it's squishy. And I go, uh-oh, it must have melted. I, I was on the I was on the road. I finally got back, and it, nobody saw it. It must have melted in the package room. So I go ah. So I put them all in the freezer, and I go tonight. We're eating all this ice cream. I can't wait. And the whole day, I had a couple shows around the city. I had a couple pods. I could not wait for this ice cream to freeze so I could eat it. You know that feeling when you just oh baby, it's Christmas morning. I got this ice cream in there. It's free ice cream. It's it's exciting. Here we go. Yes. Was that a question? Uh, yes, of oh, course. Yeah. I know that feel. I, I, I'm on, I'm, I feel that way right now with the, what happens with the ice cream. I can't wait. I'm dying. All right. So here's the here's the clinker. I do the shows. I get back at eleven at night. You know, I'm sweating. I put my hat on the on the hook. I take my scarf <laughs> off. You know, I put some logs on the fire. Feed the dog. Pet the kids. Put the wife down. And then I open the freezer. I pop open the lid. First of all, you know, it's a pint of ice cream. They're this tall. <laughs> Ice cream has shrunk down to here. What? Like it's just gone all the way down. I'm like, I've never I've had been ice cream my whole life. I've never seen this. Huh. I I've sniff seen, it. <laughs> Sorry. What'd you say? Uh, I was gonna say I've never seen anyone go down or something some kind uh, of go down. It, it was it was a f- bad it's like I tried to fake a punt and then I just snapped at <laughs> the wrong guy and the whole thing fell apart. All well, right, either way. With it. I, the ice cream, it's gone from here to here. I've never seen ice cream do that. It looks like it evaporated, which I'm like, what? I've never seen ice cream do this in all my years. I get a scoop in, and I, I do the whole thing where I go, t- I've got the lady with me. I'm like, we're not going to eat it out of the carton. Let's put it in the cups. Let's put it in the mugs and go in front of the TV and really enjoy it. She goes, all right, great. So we scoop it in the mug, scoop it in the mug. We get to the, the, the couch, sniffing it. It's got a little funk to it. I bite into it. Oh, it's turned. It's sour. It's gone to hell. It's it's rotten. It's rancid. Oh, God. All of them? All of them. Have you is ever it, heard of this? Is it like, ch- I don't know anything. About, I'm completely retarded. I call my mother to see how long you microwave a pizza for. I don't know how long <laughs> eggs last. I don't know how long my tits last. So I have no idea. So is it like... Like a cheese where it's like chunky and rancid, or it's what is it? I, I don't get it. Well, I look on the li- on the ca- canister there, and it says dairy free. Mm. So that the the lady was all excited because she's lactose basically. So she's like dairy free. I can eat it. This is great. So I said, great, I'll eat it too. We'll have an ice cream fest, and it just was sour as my a- dad's asshole. And I I even tried to like put down a few bites, and it was so rancid. It tastes like old milk. 
Oh, that's awful. That sucks. Ah. And I feel for the people, too, who sent you a nice gift. It's like a, a, a flower that doesn't blossom, as, as Kramer said. Exactly, because um, they had to take the time to package it and put it in the, the cooler box with the dry ice and ship it. I mean, I wrote them a nice thank you, but they'll never know that uh, their ice cream turned on me. I got two things. One, when you opened it and it was dry ice, I legitimately thought they sent you a vaccine. Like they were like, here's the kit, here's the needle, <laughs> fucking vaccinate. That would be, would be amazing. Exciting. What a and gift. Two, and I hope this, maybe this is hoping too much. Did you throw it away, put your boots on, your hat back on, your two piece suit, and go to the store and get some Hagen so you can still live the dream? Interesting question. Quite the opposite. I put the lid back on, I put the ice cream back in the freezer, and I watched Cobra Kai like a psycho. Oh, that show sucks! That show sucks! Horrible show. Horrible. That, shows, that show is, is turned ice cream. That's what that is. But I watched every ep. Yeah, we watched like seven, and I thought, I, I don't want to just turn this into fucking reviews, but I, I thought Cobra Kai, everyone kept saying it was great. First of all, I love Brett Ernst. I think he's hilarious, and I'm happy so he's funny. got the gig. Such a funny guy, great comic, and a good yeah. hang. Yeah. But I thought it was going to be real clever and fun. It's just kind of like cheese ball. It's like a show for kids. It's like yeah. Saved by the Bell. It's a kid show. It's horrible, but the only beauty of it is it. I think it knows it's horrible, and it, the awareness goes a long way, I think, but it's a horrible show. Okay, yeah, all right. I thought it was going to be like a really sharp... No. Fun, like, thing. It's just, like I said, it's like Saved by the Bell to me. Yes, um, it's cheese dick. One thing I love, and everybody knows I love it, <clears throat> is Feels CBD, folks. <laughs> Tuesdays with, Strat with Stories. I don't even know the name of the fucking show. <laughs> Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Feels CBD. And I'll tell you what, folks, before we started recording, we were both talking about how we use this stuff every night. I love it. They sent us a little tube. I wish they would send us more. I want, like, a vat of this stuff. Because it is nice when you finish your day, you get through the whole day, you're stressful, stressed out, then you finish, you put a couple drops on your tongue or in your tea, which I don't know if I'm using it right, but that's the way I do it, and yeah. you just feel a little cooled out, and my eyes get a little heavy, I sleep better, I don't know if it's placebo or, or what it is, but I love the stuff, I'm so grateful that they sent us some, I want you to support the people that support us, go to Feels CBD and get some Feels. What does it do? Well, it naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. It works like a charm for me. You know, I think we both have a lot of trouble sleeping. We got oh, yeah. hyperactive brains, whatever it is. Easy to take. Place a few drops on your tongue. I already said all this. I don't even need a script for this goddamn stuff because I love it. Here, it's here. real human support. If you're new to CBD, Feels offers a free CBD hotline and text message support to help guide your personal experience. Mark, I know you love it. Tell them how to get it. Big fan of the feels. I use it to sleep. I hate myself. Feels is more feeling. Has me feeling my best every day, and it can help you, too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash Tuesdays, and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. Wow. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash Tuesdays to become a member and get 50% off automatically on your first order with free shipping. One more time, feels.com slash Tuesdays, and feel better. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Please do. And speaking of feeling good, nothing feels better than intercourse. Who doesn't love some good old-fashioned intercourse? And if yes. you're a man, you have a penis, and sometimes, it, or you don't, whatever the fuck. But uh, if you have a penis, you can be whatever gender if you have a penis. Yeah, uh, well, we're in the weeds here. Pull out quick. Speaking pull of out. pulling out, <laughs> Blue Chew is a fine product. Blue yes. Chew. It's the first chewable dick pill. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew. It has the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take Blue Chew anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. It's fast and easy. Insert joke there. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door in a discreet package. Another joke opportunity. And after you chew the Blue Chew, your package will be anything but discreet. They made their own joke, and I, I fucked it up by reading it <laughs> properly. Tell them how to get it, Mark. I know you love it. 
Love the Blue Chew. Big fan. Best dick pill in the market if you ask me. You pop it, you chew it, tastes good, works fast, and it works for a long time. Right now, we got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code TUESDAYS. Just pay five clams and shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E, Chew.com. Promo code TUESDAYS to try it free. BlueChew.com. Finally, a website that can give you... An erectione. Woo! All right. Yeah. Support those sponsors. And uh, like we said, now is the best time ever to join the Patreon. You get the YouTube a week early. And uh, the YouTube's a fun one. I finally came around on YouTube podcast. There you go. Fun. It's like a TV program here. Yes. And so you get that a week early. We've been doing bonuses every week the entire pandemic. That's about nine months. I don't know how many weeks that is. Four times nine. 36, we'll call it. At least yeah. 36. We've done hour-long things. We've had a bunch of guests, Dan Soder, Tim Dillon. Then we have all the live shows from the past, plus a ton of old episodes from 2015, 16. I don't know how many years are on there, but a bunch of old ones. And what else is on there? A ton of shit. ton of shit. I, I've got Weird Road, Green Room Queefs. you got the old Sarah and you, uh, movie reviews, uh, just road stuff. And how many car rides have we queefed it up? There's so much extra good stuff, and, and I feel like the, the Patreon is the real deal. You know, not to mention we did a Sopranos review with Sopranos on and Strangers by the Lake. Oh, yeah. A couple of great movie movie uh, commentaries on there. There you um, go. And, and all that good stuff. So so please check that out. And we got a ton of new merch on oh, Public. Yeah. Uh, so you go that check right. that out. We'll put the link to the uh, merch in the uh, bio, the write-up, whatever it's called. And somehow our icon is back. I want to thank Shelby, yeah. Fanny, the people at Apple, whatever. Everybody kept writing. Our thing is is back. We're back in business. So that's exciting. It's a, it's a great time to be a Tuesday. And uh, for God's sakes... Take care of each other, for God's sakes. Don't <laughs> fucking, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Here, here. It's uh, it's getting kookier out there by the day. You know what it is? You, you, we got, we're, we're, we're clocking in a, a full calendar year here of being shut down, and now it's cold, and the, the politics are shifting and transitioning, and my dick's falling off, and so everybody's, everybody's getting cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, and... You know, I think this would happen in any time. You know, we always go, 2020, uh, 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 but this would happen in any time period. You go to the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, the 80s, whatever it is. You can't keep people cooped up. They need a structure. They need to work. They need a goal to go outside, and uh, it, it's getting it's getting hairy out there. It's crazy times. Whenever we talked about this a couple weeks ago, everyone was like, 2020, I can't wait for be 2020 for it to be over. Six days into 2021. <laughs> There's like a fucking homegrown attack on the Capitol. You're like, oh, yeah, 2021, we all knew this would be great and hunky-dory, and God only knows what's going to happen on the fucking 17th or whatever it is. But I don't want to go down the wormhole, asshole, rabbit hole. But uh, I think you know my feelings, folks, so that's (laughs) that. I think the Capitol thing will quell a little bit of the uh, inauguration stuff. That's my theory. Uh, I, yeah, I don't want to get too all into right, it, but, right, but right. I, I don't know, and I think it was a pretty clear dog whistle, the old, I won't be there, winkity wink uh. and I mean, that to me is like, hey, folks, feel free to go crazy, but I'm going to get hit with all the tweets and all the stuff, so uh, we'll just move on to some other business, but uh, I would just say, let's try to keep it cool out there. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Well, it seems like that vaccine is really uh, getting around. It's like a like a skank in seventh grade. It's all over the country. People are really doing it. My mom's into it. My dad took it. Uh, yeah, I hope so. I, my, my mother has her second shot today, God Ooh. willing. She won't have autism after it. And uh, I think my uncle's a fireman. He's getting it. My aunt's a nurse. She's getting it. My dad's a prostitute. He's gay. So I think we're going to be looking good soon. Yeah, well, that explains why your dad doesn't talk. I like that. I'm nothing worse than a yappy uh, whore there. So good for Steve. But yeah, well, that hair is... Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, finally. A little body and volume going. That thing's limped over like a wet dick. Yeah, but... well, I, I haven't showered. Aha. Uh-huh. It's too much up there, so it can't support its own weight. That's the problem. It's falling on itself. You know what I watched the other day? Conan's last Tonight Show when he gives the speech about cynicism, and he says uh, one of the great moments in TV, he says, 
Nobody gets exactly what they want out of life, but if you work really hard and you're kind, amazing things will happen, and it's just beautiful. And I watch wow. it every once in a while to just put a little dick in my ass. There you go. That is Love nice. It. I got to rewatch that. I forgot all about that. That was a big moment. That was back when TV was was still TV a little bit. It's an amazing moment. He's got his whole staff out there. He gets choked up, and he's like, I- I'm allowed to say whatever I want about NBC, and I just want to say I'm so grateful. What a moment. He could have been wow. like, fuck these people. They're a bunch of cunts, but that, he didn't, and we need a little bit of that. We need a little of that, and that was back when crying on TV was a big deal. Now every Tom, Dick, and Anal is weeping willows on the CBS, and uh, we're like, so is that a real cry, or is this a battle cry? Is this a cry for help? Uh, what are we doing here? You know, we, we jumped the shark on crying. Well, it's kind of like, I, I always feel this way, and I want to get back to the stories. I'm sorry I'm ruining the episode. I hate myself. I'll kill myself at some point, I promise. But they always say... Patreon. Put on the Patreon. People will <laughs> say... Is a lot. You learn a lot from losing, and I've always said this since I was a kid. You only learn from losing if you win most of the time. Mm. Like if you're just losing all the time, you're just learning to be a fucking loser. If right. you win a lot and then you lose, then you can get some lessons. It's the same. This analogy might have holes in it, but so does my ass. If you're if you're just crying all like Conan's never crying. He's silly yes. for twenty years. So then when he's crying, you're like, oh my god, I'm learning a lesson. Yes. He's, been, he's been winning, and now he's losing. As far as, That's how the analogy goes. But if right. you're just crying every three seconds, then what the fuck? Exactly. It, it's like the, the comedian who says fuck every other word, and then when he says fuck, it's got no weight. But then when Bill Cosby says, yeah, well, what if you're an asshole? You're like, whoa, Bill Cosby, why am I sleepy? You know, but I'm saying he, ha- he's, he never cursed, so when he did, it had some boom behind it. Yeah, exactly. I feel like I... Say fuck every word on here, but I see your point. Wow. It's a good point. Oh, yeah, God. you got to save it. You got it's got to be a specialty. That's like the comedy special. I mean, literal special. There, there's there used to be HBO, Eddie Murphy. Oh Jesus Christ! You told all your friends, you're pushing each other into the fountain, and now it's like, oh, uh, <laughs> Sebastian Maniscalco is on his third special today. There you go. Whip it good. <laughs> I agree. I think we, we agree on all the things, and uh, oh, God, this is a kooky episode. All right, you must have more. I got a couple got tiny two, things. but You want to give me a tiny, because I got, I, got I got a big saga for the ending here. Ooh, I love a saga. Um, all right, I think the haircut <laughs> might have been one of the things. Uh, <laughs> two things. This one's little. Am Hit I, me, Fanny. Am I crazy, or people, does this make you fucking nuts? Because this is something that makes me want to take a shoe, put it on my hand, and just pound someone in the face with a shoe <laughs> hand. <laughs> yes, yes. When people communicate with the meme, like they go like this, uh, hey, check this out, you ever see this? Look at this. And they just uh, show you a thing, and it's like a picture of, you know, Bob Newhart, and it says, <laughs> if everyone, whatever, COVID yeah. is the, yeah. what, what is that? I'm like, yeah, just that's the- say a thought to me. That's the lowest form of communication. Uh, 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 picture, funny picture. I got nothing to say. I don't know an intro for this. That we're not even talking about this thing. There's no context. It's just here's entertainment. Quick, look. It's like a little. It's like handing someone a cookie. Yeah, don't get me wrong. There's some hilarious memes, and the internet has some great yes. stuff. But uh, yes, uh, just people just elbow you. Go, hey, hey, look at this. And then yeah. you're like, all right, that's great. That's clever. Fuck you. Email yeah. it to me or something. Anyways, right. that's that thing. The the one thing I had, I mean, I'm, I'm hurting for stories this week here, but I drove to Boston last week. I got some family stuff going on. So I drove up there at night thinking this will be great. And I'm cruising along. I'm like, I'm going to see if I can make the best time I've ever made. I'm going to do this in, in 315. I'm going from Queens to my mother's house. Wow, and I'm gonna that's eat unheard her out. of. And so I go there, <clears throat> I'm driving, and I'm just flying. I call my old friend Jack Lynch, old comic from Boston, great guy, and I'm like, I'm going to talk to him for a while. I'm chatting with him. Traffic stop. I just see a sign that says, I-95 <laughs> closed. Car accident. It says closed. I'm on the road. Oh, I've never my experienced God. That. I'm on the road, and there's a sign that says, this road that you're currently on is closed. That's hilarious. So it's literally a parking lot. I just, Not literally. It's figuratively a parking lot. We're all parked. I put it in park. I'm sitting there talking to him. And we talked for 45 minutes. And then he just goes, so where are you at now? And I was like, oh, I didn't get a chance to say anything. I haven't moved since I called you. Yeah. We're sitting there. And I felt growth, Mark. I really was zenned out. I had this great feeling. I've been meditating like a, like a fucking douche. 
And I had this thing of like, I don't have a show. I got nowhere to be. And there's nothing I can do. There's absolutely nothing I can do. So I just sat in there, enjoyed the conversation. I felt great. Wow. It was pretty nice. nice. That is very growth. Thank you. I, I thought you'd appreciate it. You're a good friend. And then I'm talking to him, and we're talking about some life shit. And all of a sudden, I get scared. There's uh-huh. an 18-wheeler behind me, uh-huh. and he starts going, <laughs> like that. And I go, what the fuck is this? I'm, uh, uh, we're in gridlock traffic. Then he starts flashing the high beams. And now I'm nervous, because yeah, I'm a nervous guy. And I have saw Duel, and that movie with Steve Zahn, whatever that movie's called. Oh, yeah, Backdra- no, uh, Breakdown. Something like that. It's I know it. Kurt, yeah, that's pretty. That's a Kurt Russell one too. That's pretty good. Oh, ah, the Steve Break, Zahn one was fun. Breaker. Yeah, it was Breaker One Nine. I don't. I know what you're talking about. It was pretty fun, if I remember correctly. But anyways, so I'm nervous because he's like a faceless enemy. It's like a big black yes. thing. Yes. And black. A, couple, a minute passes, and I just hear. And then the lights flash again, and I'm like, I- I'm freaking out. I'm like, I'm going to get killed here. This guy's going to have a tire iron. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Then I- I'm looking. I'm like, we're in gridlock traffic. And then I realize, oh, maybe nobody's in front of the guy in front of me. Mm. I roll my window down. I put the head out like a golden retriever. Yeah. The guy in front of me put it in park and went to sleep. There's like 100 yards. We're still in traffic, but there's like 100 yards of no cars in front of this guy. How? You couldn't see that? <laughs> No, because it's so gridlock. And when he first started honking, I started moving up because I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. So I was like on his bumper, and he was in like a Subaru Forester or something like that. It was a little uh, bit... A little higher. Yeah, and all four of my tires are flat. That's a whole other story. So... Ah. Just kidding. Uh, oh. So I couldn't see through him. And so I realized he's fallen asleep. So I had to like Austin Powers... Like eight point turn because the truck's <laughs> on my ass. This right. guy's asleep, and so I had to go like through the breakdown lane and get around right. the guy. And I'm honking, and the guy's just fully zen, wow. REM sleep, fucking mouth open. And I, I th- he might still be there. I have no idea. Wow, that's crazy. But it was nice to know I wasn't the asshole. And then uh, I drove up the hundred yards, sat in traffic for another few minutes, and then, you know how it is. If it's a huge accident, obviously they shut down the road. But once they open the road, no traffic. I mean, we just we flew. Flew home, hung with the family, watched some football, had a nice time, and uh, that's that. Wow. You see, that's crazy because that's another sign of growth is you said, hey, what the hell's the problem here? You didn't just go, hey, fuck you, asshole, blow me. Quit your honking, you douche. But you actually, you know, looked around. You didn't just in, you didn't just make it about you and internalize it and go, this guy sucks. Yeah, I felt, I felt pretty good, and uh, yeah, I, I'm growing. I'm changing, and I'm growing, and uh, I'm a grower and a shower. Yeah, well, I got a growth in my pants and on my neck that I need to get checked out. But uh, let me let me run this one by you. Now, this this I don't know if this is growth, but it's definitely uh, definitely a queef. So you know, shows out in New York now are few and far between. You, you get up on a show once a week, maybe, and it's a shit show. You're standing on a picnic table, giving the Gettysburg Address to four lunch ladies <laughs> and a hobo. But I got a gig at the Soho Club. Ooh. So you're like, well. That's some pretty high society, a little highfalutin. You get a meal, you get a cocktail. It's pl- it's plush seating and a brick wall and you know, nice lighting. So you're like, all right, fuck it. I'll throw on the leather jacket and head over to the Soho Club. So she goes, uh, since you're doing the Soho Club tonight, don't forget next week, I got a gig at the Ludlow House. And I go, ooh, which is the same as the, the same thing, just different neighborhood. So I go, oh, great. I'm locking in some some nice gigs here. So I, I hightail over there. I'm closing it out, so I wait a while. I get there. You know, you don't want to hang out too much. You just want to show up for your spot and leave. So I show up kind of at the end, and, you know, there's, like, some model at the desk, and, uh, you know, it's freezing out. So I'm like, oh, hey, hey, uh, comedy show? And she's like, huh? And I'm like, oh, this fucking dippy broad doesn't know anything. She's vapid. She's all, all tits and no brains, you know? And I'm like, you know, the comedy show upstairs. She goes, there's no show here tonight. And I go, here we go, you fat coos. Look, what what floor is it? Just tell me the floor. And she's like, "There's no show here." And I go, "I swear, I swear to God, I'm at the, the show." And she goes, "The show's at the Ludlow House." Oh boy. And I go, "Oh shit in my mouth." And right then, first of all, I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed because I was kind of giving her the business a little bit. And then you're like, "Man, am I slipping?" Like, I think this 
this lockdown indoor shit. It's making me. It's making me less sharp. Interesting. Because well, I heard you got a lot going on. I do. I. I mean, I do a pod. I'm in my pajamas right now. I do some pull ups on scaffolding and and cook a, a TV dinner and I call it a day. Well, you got a lot going on upstairs. I mean, you're doing shows. You got a podcast. There's the social media. The people tweet at us. They all call us assholes. You're bad people. You're you know whatever. Good and point. that's a lot. Life's a lot. You know, money. You got an apartment. You got a car. The whole thing. I mean, we're adults now. It's it's traumatic. And then obviously we got Arrested Development. We never dealt with anything ever. <laughs> and so we feel like children, but we're adults. So it's it's hard. All right, all right. Well, I feel better. So, yeah, I, I flip-flopped the whole thing in my mind, and I had Soho next week, and L- Ludlow is tonight. So then you get that moment of, all right, well, I screwed up. The show's almost over. I'm going home. You know you know when you get like, ah, what are you going to do? I fucked up. So I text the lady, hey, I'm at the Soho house, and she's like, oh, geez, can you make it? And you're kind of hoping she would go, ah, it's too late. Of but I could make it, but I'd have to Uber, so now that's 20 bucks. You're going to make 25 on the gig, but hey. It's my mistake. So um, now I'm begrudgingly getting an Uber. I get in the Uber. We go to the Ludlow house. It's 12 minutes away. She's texting me, how close are you? How close are you now? I'm putting a guy on the stretch. You're like, God damn it. It's all stressful. Finally, I get there. I run upstairs. I get there. I'm covered in sweat. There's six people there. They're all yelling at Andy Haynes on stage, giving him, just heckling him. It's like a, it's like a, urban group just really you know chugging booze and giving him the business you know you suck shut up I, that ain't you you you're full of shit whatever and i'm like ah not only did i you know run here and all that but like this show's gonna stink oh god andy haynes by the way is a first class comic hilarious killer comic great guy handsome well-dressed uh, great wife the whole thing so I'm like, oh, they don't, they don't want me to go on. So another square white guy is going to go up and ruin these nights. It's going to be a fucking, uh, what, what do you call that thing? Uh, oh, what's that, 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 uh, that website that they, uh, you get beat up and they put it on the site? Oh, uh, and one? No, not, not and one. Um, no, what is, it's uh, true uh, crime. What is that called? Uh, Parlor. Uh, no, Parlor's big now. Not anymore. Um, uh, uh, what is that thing? Oh, hold on. I know what it is. I'm going to say it. Hot fuzz. Oh, uh, no, no. Hot blooded. No, no. I know me. what it is, though. It's um. Why do I know this? Boy, we sound like a couple of crackers here. It is here. like and one mixtape. Yeah, it's tape. something like it's that. Oh, World Star. Yes. Yes. yes that's it. <laughs> that's yes. it. There it is. Woo. Boy, give me the honky award over here. Good Lord. <laughs> uh, so... I'm gonna like, I'm gonna be on World Star. I'm gonna I'm, the N word's gonna slip. Something's gonna happen. So I go on and I go. Uh, here we go. They bring me up and they're immediately. They look at me and they go. Uh, here we go. Another fucking dweeb. And uh, so I go on and I just start pelting them with the hardest, most offensive jokes I have. Black jokes, Cosby joke, rape joke, age joke, and I'm killing. Oh I'm wow! I'm killing because they didn't see it coming. And it was the highlight of my night. And uh, these guys were fucking fist pumping and howling and uh they're like oh shit like doing the thing where they jump around like they saw a magic trick and man i, I hugged them all after we got photos it just goes you never know with comedy you never know what you're gonna get into one guy at one point i said a joke and he goes damn this dude got no chill and the place went crazy and no chill. Uh, yeah i mean like i i guess no filter i don't know okay so boy highlight of my year and i went from regretting, uh, d- disappointed, bummed out, frustrated to like, how's this going to be? I'm nervous, doubting, and it was great. It always feels great to do something. It always feels better to do the thing than not do the thing. That's true, but every queef in your bean is saying, don't do it, but I'm glad I did it. That's great. I, I think it's like there's a uh, science behind it, that, that thing, the uh, ecological, evolutionary thing, your brain... From, you know, 18, 12, or whatever the fuck, is like, there's trouble out there. So your brain is like, stay in when yes. you're safe. We're safe here. It wants you to stay in the cave because there's T-Rexes or whatever the fuck. Yes. Uh, but you face the T-Rex and the brontosauruses, and they loved you. Yeah, I mean, isn't that every every movie is, there's a conflict. What if in every movie they went, we got a conflict? Let's go the other way. Let's stay home. Let's watch Netflix and get under the covers. Every movie would suck. Yes, Netflix and no chill. Oh, um, nice, fatty. So, 
Yeah, also, I think that's why that colloquialism, that could be wrong, they exist. You know, the one where they go, do something every day that scares you. And everybody goes, oh, I'm supposed to do heroin every day? Should I jump off a cliff every day? Rah! And you're like, no, you got I think the point is to, to, to go for that thing and mix it up. Yeah, challenge it. And I talk about this all the time. It's like when I was young, living life to the fullest was like, I got to stay out till sun up and drink 100 beers and kick someone's windshield in and drive drunk and, and, and fuck a fat lady. Yes. But now living life to the fullest for me is like I'm, I sit and I meditate and I have like mm. sex with my wife and pretend I'm black. And then we get up and say a prayer and, and, and watch a program. And right. then we snuggle, and I have a nice conversation with a, a friend, and maybe do a little reading, and I'm like, I, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm in it for all of it. I'm, I'm uh, connected and focused and centered for all the activities, even brushing my teeth, and that's life to the fullest. Not ah. blacking out on a fucking Tuesday and, and, and taking a street sign and putting it in my wife's bed. It's a good point. Yeah, you're actually... Uh, avoiding life when you're blacking out and taking a couple of Percocets and, uh, you know, going down on a relative. It's better when you're, <laughs> you know, living it in the Ex mom. Exactly. You just described Easter Sunday. But um, <laughs> I I'm mad at the – I feel like Bill Burr. I'm upset with these people for not liking Haynes because he's got some great stuff. Well, I mean, Haynes is great, but you got to sit he's, – he's, I wouldn't say he's high energy or uh, – he doesn't grab you. You know, if you listen, it's great. If you don't listen, you're going to miss it. And I think they were just too busy, you know, hooting and hollering. Gotcha. Well, that sounds uh, <clears throat> fun. I'm doing a show tonight outside Shafi Hossein. Our pal has a show. And then I'm doing some shows this weekend. And uh, I I'm rusty. I haven't been on stage in a little bit. I got Royers for January 27th. Everyone come out. And uh, it's it's we talked about this. I'm settling into like I do a couple podcasts and I know. Uh, hang out with friends. And I'm like shit. And spring is coming. I got a bunch of dates on the book. And I'm like fuck. I, I don't know how to work anymore. I stink. Totally, man. It, it's true that that is that Shafi show in Williamsburg. Yeah, I think it's uh, roasted nugget. What the hell is it called? Ah, uh, that one's great. I think uh, it's called uh, World Star. I don't know, but that's Eric, a, that's a hot oh, one. I know it. It just hit me. Arrogant swine. There it is. Yeah, that's a good one. You're gonna you're gonna have fun there. And a couple Tuesdays came out. Oh, great. Well, come on out tonight, uh, folks. If you're in Williamsburg, Arrogant Swine is the name of the bar, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And I was worried because it's it's right off that L. So I was like, these guys are gonna hate me, and they were they were fun. I think Andy Haynes is on my show. As ah, matter of fact. All right. Well, again, I don't want to make it sound like he's not good. He's a killer, and I've known I've run two shows with the guy. I'm a fan. But, you know, he oh, wasn't. Yeah. I don't think that's the impression anyone's okay. getting. I'm saying the crowd was was tough. They didn't they didn't like him. They would have enjoyed him more if they had uh, focused. But that the feeling when someone's not doing well and you think you're going to do bad and then you do great is like the greatest feeling in the world. Yeah, I had to. I pulled. A, I pulled the, an audible. I just said I'm going all the way. I'm going for the jugular. That seems like the only way these this audience is gonna give a shit. The old jug. What does a jugular do exactly? It's just a vein. What's what's going on there with the jugular? That's a good good question. A jugular. A something. Something in the neck. I know that because they always go go right for the jugular. Hey, and they hit the guy right there. Right. Yeah. I think it, it's if you touch it, it explodes and something. Something's up, but uh, now did you did you have another uh, mini thing, a, a bite size stroke? No, I think that's uh, about it. I mean, I wrote down something, but it doesn't even make sense now. It just says, uh, "What does it say?" Proud boys for life. Oh, sh people show me a me. Oh god, my notes are embarrassing. I can't even say them out loud. <laughs> oh, all right. There's question marks all over the place. So, so yeah, you you bring us home here. Well, I'll try to squeeze it in here, but uh, this is. I guess somewhat of an epic tale. I, I don't want to build it up. It's, it's not much of a tale. It's just a crazy thing happened, and I had to deal with it. Yeah, I think I know where it's going to go, because I think I dealt with it on some level. Oh, really? Sexual I transition? Ass I assume. No. Uh, so, got a gig in Tempe, which okay. uh, you, you forget. I guess we're not traveling as much, or at least I forget. Tempe's far away. I'm like, ah, I'm doing Tempe. That's on the other side of the country. Oh, yeah. It's very far. Yeah. I just look, ah, it's Tempe, whatever. But Tempe's like almost L.A. or almost San Diego. But either way, so uh, get, you know, 
you know, when you got a flight that day, you're all over the place. You wake up at 7.30 in the morning. You're, you're scatterbrained. You're tired. You got a half a boner. You, you pop a Propecia. You take a whiz. You jump out into your Uber. I'm looking at my phone, and I actually had this thought in the car. Ah, you, you're staring at your Uber this whole ride. Or you're staring at your phone this whole Uber ride. Like, give it a rest. You're about to be on a plane. Like, take it easy. I put the phone down. I go, you're right. I look out the window. I start having some daydreams. It's nice. Oh, we're here. Thank you, sir. Here you go. Jump out, grab my bag, run down, get my ticket, go through the security, and I start putting things in the bin, and I realize, I don't have my phone in my pocket. Oh, it's in my jacket. Oh, maybe it's not in the jacket. Oh, maybe it's a... And you can't even believe it. I felt like... I feel like the mom on Home Alone. I was like, Kevin! Ah! You know, because it's gone. Oh, It's God. off. It's been 10 minutes in the Uber. Gone. Just thinking about it's given me like my, my butthole has tingles it's horrific i mean it, it feels like your kid is driving away like on a on a city bus and you're like ah and then everything every instinct is to get on the phone call lyft call the cu- customer service call a- at&t but that's all on the phone and then so now i'm going up to service reps or what are you delta people and i'm going hey uh can i use your phone which is now like saying you know can i fuck your daughter you know because it's they're like my phone i can't give you my phone you gotta put your face grease on my phone i gotta you gotta put in my credit card i mean it, it doesn't it doesn't fly but one guy was like all right fine nice enough guy and so he goes why don't you call lyft and i go okay and then Lyft says, what's up? And I go, my phone is gone. They don't let you talk to them. It's all automated. So oh, well, I go, gone. my phone is gone. And they go, okay, we're going to send you a code so we know it's you. And I go, how are you going to send me a code? And they go, we're going to send it to your phone. Fo- ah. And that, that's the whole thing. It's just a rigmarole of that. You know, we're going to send you a code to your phone. Oh, wait, we don't have your phone. Oh, what's the name of the driver? It's on my phone. Ah, oh, what, 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 uh, what was the name of his license plate? It's on my phone. You know, it's all on the phone. It's brutal. So I mean, that's the thing that sucks is we have all this beautiful stuff set up where if I want to look at my finances, I look and it sends a laser beam into my eyeballs and then it tells me the last 20 things I've purchased. Yes. But then if it signs you out, you, you can't get back in. And if you, like you said, you lose your phone, I can't get my money. And if I can't get my money, I can't buy my double dildo set. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, say bye to the butt plug. So you're just like, do I get on this flight? Or do I keep trying to contact the guy? Ah, what do I do? And, you know, it's the last flight out of Clarksville. I got to take it. I got to show that night. So I get on the flight without a phone. And it just you just feel like you just quit heroin cold turkey. You know, that's all you do on a phone is look at your phone, podcast, music, headphones. It's all over. And I just had to be like an Amish guy. I'm reading the, 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 the Sky Mall. I'm like, oh, an inflatable chess set. Get the hell out of here. You know, and I'm reading the, the, the safety lecture. The, the lady's giving the safety lecture. I'm like... Oh, I'm eating nuts watching it. Like, hey, this is pretty good. I'm so bored. And it was it was a nightmare. Five and a half hours or whatever on the plane. You get off the plane. Now you got to get an Uber. But you can't get an Uber because you don't have a phone. So you're like, what do I do? See, I got a cab. I mean, the whole thing was cuckoo banana. I'm the guy in the business center at the hotel on the on the weird computer. You know, you know, I'm next to Grandma's printing out her ticket like, like it's the 80s. I mean, it's just crazy. I show up to the club. The guy's like... We've been texting you all day. Where the hell you been? We've been emailing you. We need to know who your opener. I'm like, I don't have a phone. They're like, Jesus. I mean, it was it was tough, man. So what did you end up doing? Because I we were I was emailing you like text, which is very weird to email a text. I'm like, what's up? And then just send an email. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's very bizarre. So what did you end up doing? Did you buy a new phone? Did you have them ship it, or did you get a coffee can with a string? Well, I got on my I got on the uh, computer. And I did the find your phone thing. And then they found the phone. And by the way, my phone is in an Uber, so it's like, ping, found your phone in the Bronx. Ping, found your phone in Central Park. Ping, you're in Astoria. Ping, Long Island. Ping, Denver. Ping, Jersey. And I was like, Jesus, we got it with the pings. So <laughs> finally, uh, I get to in touch with Lyft. They contact the driver. Then I have to give Lyft uh, the, the girlfriend's number. So then they contact her, and the guy bought the phone a couple days later. And then I... By this time, I'm like cold turkey. I haven't haven't had a cigarette in three days, so I've kind of kicked it. And then you get home, and you're like, you're the girlfriend's like, here's the phone. You're like, oh yeah, this block of nothing. But the first two days, you feel like you're not even on the planet because no one can reach you. 
Yeah, I remember when I was in uh, Denver I, I forget, last August, I guess. It's hard to know. Everything pre-COVID is like a fucking mush now. Yeah. But yeah. I was in Denver, and the same, not the same thing happened. A completely different thing happened. But my, my phone just completely died, didn't, couldn't resurrect it, plugged it in, the whole mm. thing. Just zero phone. And it, it was a similar feeling of like, I, I don't know what's going on. Those texts that I got in that time are lost forever. Yeah. But after a while, you're kind of like, this is pretty nice because you don't have even the option. Because I'm always trying to quit my phone and stay off my phone. I'm reading books and listening to podcasts, doing the whole thing. or trying to quit or break up with your phone as this book. But yeah. when you don't have it, it's a lot easier because you're like, oh, it's not even an option to, right. to pick it up. Whatever. Right. That's. I mean, if you're going to quit, that's the way to do it is just get rid of it. That whole putting it across the room, that, that's bullshit. And... Yeah, it's just it's it's a punch in the face realizing like I look at this thing before I go to bed, I look at it when I wake up, it's my alarm, it's my news, it's my how many steps have I walked? What podcast is out today? I got to put my notes in here. Let me check my email. Let me check the weather. I let me check the the Delta app to see where my flight is. It's all right there, which is so convenient, but if you lose it, you're fucked. Yeah, it's uh, what what was that noise just then? Was that uh, It was a buzzer. Oh, okay. It sounded like a, a backhoe. <laughs> That's my rap name. Uh, um, but you got the phone back now, and it was nice to uh, get a text. Oh, yes. Jesus, that's scary. Do you have to get the buzzer? No, I can do no. My she, plugs. She's on it. It's a, it's a package, I assume. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, when it was you, nice to get that text on Sunday, and I was like this. Woo, he's back. Because yes. even, even a friend losing their phone is traumatic. Because the whole right. time I'm like, what's Mark going to do? He's not going to have a phone. <laughs> what if I have to email him when this is crazy? And yeah. so, and then you just went back, respond, and I was like, "Okay, great, we're back. The little guy's safe at the end of the line." Exactly. So, so we're back, and uh, uh, we got to wrap this up. But I'm in, uh, I'm in OKC this weekend at Bricktown Comedy Club in uh, Oklahoma uh, next weekend. So come on out to that. Hell yeah! I'm. Uh, <clears throat> I got some stuff. January 27th, Royersford. Get your tickets. Uh, I don't know what's going on or who's going to be there, but it should be fun. And then February 11th through the 14th, Key West Comedy. I'm back in Key West. I don't know if anyone's uh, around or in Florida. Make that trip down there. That's going to be fun. I can't wait. And then uh, March, I think things are going to be cooking. So uh, we'll see about that when it happens. And yeah. um, I'm doing the show with Ron on. It's fun. Joe and Ron on talk movies, and it's it's doing better than uh, – I expected. Take it easy right. on Ron on, for God's <laughs> sakes. These people, I, I feel for I'm like deleting comments left and right because this guy is going to kill himself if he sees any of them. Well, that's the that's the price you pay when you're going to fuck the devil in the ass. You're going to get a, a, you know, Satan's herpes. You can't just run your mouth like that and not get only blowback there, Ronnie. <laughs> I mean, my God. But you'd think he's, you know, saying, I, I don't know what. I don't even want to say an example because people get mad about that. But. But it's a, it's a fun show. It's on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube. The audio is also on the Patreon, as mentioned, if you don't want to look at our dumb faces. And um, what was I going to say? Yeah, go subscribe to my YouTube. I'm trying to build it up, put some stuff on there, because I assume we're all going to get canceled at some point. So trying to get those YouTube numbers yeah. up. And, uh, yeah, try to, uh, you know, take care of each other and maybe take a little break from social media or, you know, I don't know. I don't want to try to fucking save the world here, but uh, something's <laughs> got to be done. This is uh Hey, it's on them. It's on them. Don't don't even if they want to help themselves, they can do it. It's not your job to help them and uh, they can all blow each other. And you know, like you got one life to live. You want to get on social media, do it, but it is it is a a harmful thing and that's that's up to you if you want to try to fix it. Yeah. And maybe just consider that uh, you know, this fucking game show host fucking uh, <laughs> swindler it. might be lying. Maybe Don't he's making it. some stuff up. Just consider it. Consider, consider it. it. There you go. And uh, I'm at Soul Joel's in February again and uh, Stress Factory. We're going to do a one-nighter, so that'll be fun. Keep, uh, keep a lookout for that. And all kinds of new dates. Uh, good nights in Raleigh. I'm at the Funny Bone in Ohio somewhere, Cincinnati, one of those, Columbus. So, yeah, keep keep your eyes peeled. What, what do you got there, Fatty? I already did it. We already went oh, through. We're all, all wacky. Right. I got three dates, and uh, two of them are my wife, and one's a guy I met on you know Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, hey, I want to I hear about that on the pod. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, be nice. Uh, comb your hair. And, uh, yeah, I guess that'll do it. I'm trying. I thought I had something else, but I guess that's that's that, Fatty. Oh, uh, do I suck? You hate me? I, I, I threw everything off. This episode stinks. I'm horrible. No, I'm no, shit. I'll no. kill myself. I'll shave my head. I'm gay. 
No. no. 